But when we check things like direct current, and you're checking voltage with your meter, your meter does have two leads. It has a red lead and it has a black lead. The black lead goes into a jack mark common, C-O-M for common. We have a reference point that we use when we're making DC measurements and it's called ground. It's called ground. Ground is our zero volt point. When we're making DC voltage measurements, we almost always put the black meter lead on ground. In fact, when, there's many, many cases I'll show you where we'll put the black meter lead on ground. And in fact, I'll even show you one where we'll put the red meter lead on ground, but that's a kind of an interesting and unique test. But whenever we're making voltage checks, we'll almost always put the, the black lead on ground. Ground is our zero volt reference point. It's just like, let's say we're talking about a pilot and the pilot's flying around and he, and he calls his, traf his altitude into an air traffic controller. He doesn't give his altitude above the earth, does he? Because that's always changing. He'll go over a mountain or whatever. What does he use? Well, he uses sea level, right? Sea level, right. Or sea level is, like ground is our electronic sea level, basically. And we have a couple of different schematic symbols that we'll use, several actually, that we'll use for ground. One of them, and the most common one that you'll see, looks like this. Kind of forms like a, uh, an arrow that always points down to the bottom of the schematic uh, diagram. This is called an earth ground. It's called an earth ground because when you see this ground symbol, it is somewhere, anything electrically connected to this symbol, is somewhere actually electrically connected to the earth itself. You know that if you look at the, you know, our AC power distribution, it looks like this. And there's a, a short slot and a longer slot and then this half round guy. And this is an earth ground. Somewhere in the building, this is, this, this, third round pin is supposed to be connected to like a cold water pipe that's buried in the ground or perhaps a steel rod that's pounded into the ground somewhere. The earth itself is our zero volt reference point. Uh, and so that's the, that's the earth ground. And of course it's zero volts. In fact, the other, the long slot is also zero volts. It's called the neutral. N-E-U-T-R-A-L. It's called the neutral side. That's also zero volts. Theoretically, I should be able to stand with wet feet on wet concrete and stick my tongue in that long slot and not get a shock off of it. Uh, on the other hand, the short slot is what we call the hot side. And that's the side that has the 120 volts AC on it. Whenever you set a new, um, when you set a new uh, location or a new, well, a new street location or a new arcade, it's really a good idea to check the AC power to make sure that it's properly grounded and everything's hooked up right. Um, when you check from the hot side to neutral, you should get 120 volts AC there. When you check from the hot side to ground, you should also get 120 volts AC. If you check from the hot side to ground and you get something like 40 or 50 or 60 volts AC, you have no ground at all. It's floating. The ground is floating. This can be dangerous because you no longer have a safety ground and, and sometimes the effect will be you'll touch two rails of two different pinballs and you'll get a shock or uh, or even just touch the control panel of a game if you're wearing bare if you have if you're wearing no shoes I should say if you if you're wearing bare feet uh, and uh, and and you might also get a shock also when the game's not grounded uh, all kinds of weird electrical impulses can get into the game it can blow logic boards it can blow power supplies this is a real problem in Mexico real bad problem down there and ain't nothing grounded properly in Mexico, nothing. And, and so you can get shocks off all kinds of weird stuff. Uh, here in the United States it's not really so much of a problem. Anyway, so earth ground is, is zero volts and it's actually connected to the earth itself. You, uh, you will see me draw a kind of a shorthand version of this same earth ground symbol. I'll often draw it like this because it's a lot faster. These two mean the exact same thing. They mean this is exactly the same as this. It always points down to the bottom of the page. Earth ground. Well, you know how in, 
in most vehicles, you have a 12 volt car battery, and you know how the negative side of the car battery is connected right to the chassis of the car? It's called negative ground. If you lift the hood of any car and look at the car battery, the negative side of the car battery will be connected through a real thick wire, and it'll go right to like the engine block or the chassis or something like that. It's what they call a negative ground system. But in your car, the car is up on four rubber tires. That ground cannot be an earth ground. There's no possible way. It's not touching the earth at all. So we have a separate kind of a ground. It's called a chassis ground. Chassis ground. And the chassis ground is a different symbol. It looks like this. It is still zero volts. It's still zero volts, but it's zero volts. It's not connected to... Uh, the actual earth itself and when we start looking at the monitor schematics you'll see that the ground symbols are all chassis ground symbols for reasons which I'll explain later on when we start looking at monitors uh, so either of these things are zero volts okay any questions so far okay, now one more thing before we take a break Let's go back to our car here, automobile. Here's the 12 volt car battery. The negative side is connected to the chassis ground. There's the positive side, 12 volt battery. Goes out here, and let's say it goes to my radio or something. There's the, the DC power going into the radio. That's the source path, isn't it, right? The, the path from the source to the load, which in this case is my radio. My source is the battery, load is the radio. Well, remember, I need to have a return path for a complete circuit, and the return path is back to ground like this. Can everybody see that by putting a ground symbol here and a ground symbol here, it's electrically exactly the same thing as if I were to draw a wire in between the two? I mean, ground is simply just the metal part of the car chassis. It's a big, giant, fat wire, obviously. So, so that's pretty obvious, but this is actually an important concept. Ground is the same everywhere. When I draw ground in two or maybe even more different places, like, for instance, it not only goes to the radio, but there's also, I've got a CB rig, right? That side of that would also be grounded, right? That's the return path. The current flows into the radio, but current also flows into the CB. The return is back through ground. There's lots and lots of things in, well, in anything, in a, in a video game, a monitor, a pinball, whatever. There's lots of things that are connected to ground. And instead of having a, a, a wire going back to a central ground, which would be really complicated and the schematic diagram would be a mess. Instead, they put a ground symbol everywhere that it goes to ground. But everybody can see that these are all connected together, correct? All right.